Hello, this is Teslon. I'm in my VK2801 in Erlenberg Standard Mode from the North Spawn. For Volume 8 of the Lighthouse Tutorial Series, what would you do? This is a series where at multiple times during the fight I'll stop the replay and ask you if you were driving this tank, what would you do? And then after a short pause I'll tell you what I did and explain why I made the decision that I did. For the battle there's one scout apiece, two artillery apiece. Teams are actually very evenly matched, almost tank for tank in the same positions with the same types of tanks. A little bit of difference, but overall good mix of tanks and, and as far as tank composition goes, evenly matched teams. Now I'm going to start going over here to the east. What I can do over here depends entirely on how many people come with me so as I move over here I'm watching how many tanks and what kind are moving over here to the east with me and it looks like four or five of them are so that's better than expected most of the time now my goal is to get down here to this hill and spot but I have to be aware of where that 12T is especially and maybe some of the mediums too there's two spots on mediums so I'm pulling up here, I get spotted, I'm going to turn around, so I'm ready to go up the hill. What would you do? And what I'm going to do is back out. I'm not even going to go up the hill. Because my support isn't in place yet. There's two mediums coming and that Centurion can get big damage on me. I don't want to back up the hill when they know I'm right there and they're waiting on me to get lit up so they can shoot me. So I'll just pull over here. Not really where I want it to be, but it's a good fallback position for me because as you can see I can pull up here and snipe and shoot at the tanks that are up on top the opposite side of the hill. Shooting back out in case I get lit up. I don't have to worry about being passive and not shooting because our team's getting their own spots for the most part. So when I have the opportunity up here, I can go ahead and fire and not worry about costing my team spots. And there it is. I get to put a nice shot into his side here. And I know I'm getting spotted now, so I back up right away. didn't quite aim well and I put it in front of him. Now, I'm not going to ask you what, what to do right now, but I want you to notice how this Centurion suddenly decided to move forward. Considering the fact that up till now he hasn't been aggressive like that, this tells me there's other tanks over there coming with him or else he wouldn't do it. He knows there's multiple tanks up here in opposition to him. So the fact he's coming forward alerts me right now to the fact that there's some unseen tanks moving to the north along with him. Let's watch and see. If he was just going to suicide, he would have done it in the beginning. So, yep, and there's the first one, AMX 5120. Gotta pull up and help you take him out. It's going to take a couple shots to do. A T-54 is taking it on the chin right now. Hopefully we can keep him alive. T-32 is moving in to help. SU-152 moves in to help. And here comes the T-34-1. Thank God they didn't all come at once. There's the AMX-12T as well. Get a fire, get a kill. And there's the Object 704. Now, this is what happens when you're in pubs. They didn't quite coordinate their attack. 
they, they arrived at different times. If they would have timed it to all come in together, that could have been an overwhelming attack and we would have all died. You can see the map. What would you do? I am totally backing out. If you look to the right, to the south of me, that J Panther's just sitting up there. If I stay up on top of that ridge, I'm going to die. So I pulled forward and got the one flanking shot, but I realized what was going on and had to back out. Now, should I curl in behind him? Should I keep pressing to the south? As you can see, we're starting to break down the opposition in the west. What would you do? I'm not even going to think about turning back. <laughs> that T-32 is in bad situation right now, and I don't have enough firepower to bail him out. Two TDs plus the 12T. I'm getting out of here and going to hopefully find the artillery. One of them already has two kills. He needs to die. It's kind of like sacrificing the T-32, but see, he's dead. You have to recognize when your continued presence isn't going to alter the outcome. And if the outcome is you're going to die, then get away while you can. Now, Lori missed a shot at me, so I get a free kill on him. Artillery's dead. Now, what would you do? Well, I certainly don't plan on going north and getting back into that mix with two TDs in the, in the light. That's a no win for me. Oh man, here comes the light. He's going to bring the fight to me. Hopefully the TDs aren't coming behind him. Dude, you only have two shots left. You can't kill me in those two shots. Oops, he done ran out of bullets. Now you die. I can just take my time, stay in front of your gun. I don't care. You're going to die because you can't shoot back. Helps to count rounds, guys. Now I'm heading off to the west. I'm not going back to the east. It's still two TDs up there, and I don't want to be involved in that. I don't think they're hurt very badly. And even, even if they each were one shots, it probably wouldn't work out to my favor. I'm a less than a one shot. <laughs> So I'm going to pull over here and see if I can sneak in behind these guys and get some flanking shots on them. We have a two tank lead. Bite's definitely not sewn up yet. Could go either way. Now it's only a one tank lead. The question right now in my mind is are there, did any of the, either of those TDs move to the south to try to back up the AMX 12T or are they moving to the north and trying to flank from that area? I'm going to take a blind shot at this guy where he was. I don't think I hit because of the pile of dust that came up. Or the cloud of dust. Whoa, there's the Indian Panzer. Okay. I'll just pull up and you're moving forward, so I'm going to shoot at you as you move forward. Hit the shot, but it goes low and I hit his track, so I don't get good damage. I was hoping to hit his haul. Could have killed him. He's coming straight at me. I'm just going to stop, get aimed in, when he crests that little hill, I'm going to be ready for him. There we go. Die. I has three dies. Just two TDs left, and there's the 704. Okay. Pull up here. Hopefully I can snipe him from this hill up here. We have a three tank lead. Five tanks against two. There they both are. So they got here, they tried to flank and got here a little bit too late. I'm going to pull up and shoot at the 704 because he's damaged and he's the bigger threat. I'd like to get him out of there. I know I'm getting seen so I back out. Now you can see the entire situation. You see where all our tanks are. You see where both of theirs are. What would you do? I'm thinking about pulling up because I have concealment back trying to get another shot at that 704 but I'm troubled by the fact that 
our tanks are all hurt and we're all directly in front of two TDs that haven't been hurt a lot. So I'm not liking the way this battle is looking right now. The J Panther pipped out of sight. The 704, if I can see him, is going to be pointed almost straight at me. I don't like that. I really don't like our position right now, even though we have a lead in tanks. We're playing to their strength and not to ours. And we have a lot of tanks that can die really fast. So I'm thinking about trying to circle around to the middle and flanking them. And I'm thinking about doing a couple of other things. What are you thinking? I'm really thinking about getting a sixth kill and getting that top gun, but you know what? I'd rather have a win than a medal. So, as I toy with the idea of coming around and trying to flank these guys, I'm like, nope. Discretion is the better part of Valor, and I am going to go cap for one reason. I'm not capping to try to win. I'm capping to force the issue with the TDs. Because if our guys sit over there in front of those guys and get picked off one by one, I'm going to end up trying to kill two TDs at once, and that's not fun. I'm going to come over here and cap and force them to move. If they try to move laterally, they'll be seen as they move across here and dealt with. If they try to move straight forward, that should give our guys some better shots and the ability to place multiple rounds on the tanks and wear them down. So I'll sit here and try to shoot if I can. I knew I didn't have a, a big window of opportunity to take that shot and so I did it quick and it didn't hit. But the guy dies and that's just the 704 left and he's gone. So I don't know what they would have decided to do had I not capped. But in my mind capping was the best thing. It was the way to force the issue and make them move forward or move to the side and expose their flanks to enemy to our fire. Had no thoughts of capping to win. It was purely cap to force you guys to move forward. And it works. We win. I didn't get a medal, but I got the win. For the battle I had let's see here. Two thousand one hundred and seventy XP, five spots, a whopping gigantic gigantic unbelievably huge amount of spotting damage six points five kills 2289 damage so no medals passed up the opportunity but I got the win and that's what's important when I went over to the east originally I wanted to go up to the bush up here on top of the hill it wasn't going to happen because the two enemy mediums were moving down that way and I knew I was going to put myself in a position where I probably couldn't recover from because I didn't have the support in place behind me yet. So I stayed back and just spotted from the end of the hill down here. And when it was able to help out with their initial assault, fortunately for us, they didn't quite coordinate it. They all moved forward together, but they forgot the second part of that formula. And that is, it's good to all move forward together, but... The most important part is reaching the battle at the same time. And they were strung out, and so we were able to whittle them down to a large degree, reduce the effectiveness of their attack before they were able to bring all their guns to bear. But when the T-32 and I ended up alone, and there were still multiple tanks left, it was time for me to leave. I was going to circle around and try to flank them, but the J Panther was there and prevented me from doing it. So I was like, okay, I'll just go south and kill your artillery. And uh, then I was going to move west. The 12T came in. I was counting his shots. He reached six. Hey, I don't have to worry. I don't have to get crazy. You can't shoot me for a few seconds, and you're going to be dead before you can reload. And then it was off to try to flank the team in the west. Because of the situation with the TDs, all of us being directly in front of them, I decided that going over and capping was the better thing to do. And uh, hopefully my team would be able to deal with them if they tried to cross the middle and come after me. And if they came straight into the teeth of my, of my team, then you saw what happened. We were able to deal with them. If we would have sat in the back and tried to out-snipe them, 
we had a good chance of losing the fight. So sometimes, actually every time, you should choose to take a win over choosing to take a medal, and that's exactly what I did here. From Erlenberg Standard Mode North Spawn, taking the win. Happy hunting.